No, it ain't to happen next. Is he outside or is he just not inside? I don't know. It's difficult to say. I don't think he'll ever be inside, let's say. <laughs> I think it's, that's for sure. He's one of less than a handful who is capable of art in cinema. People would say, that's a Tim Burton film. Uh, and what do you think they would mean when they said, that's a Tim Burton film, by the look of it? <laughs> well, I've heard that s spoken several different ways, sort of positively and sort of not so positively. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I first started, I never really had any feeling about that. And I don't actually try to think about that too much because I sort of feel like I don't want to become a, a thing, you know? There's that sort of thing that happens, I think, in Hollywood where you sort of become a, a commodity as opposed to an individual, and I've always sort of fought against that. But I don't think too much about it just because it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, actually. Yeah, I can imagine that. It's like the word gothic people throw it around, don't they? Well, yeah, and I, you know, <laughs> it's got so many different me meanings. It's the same thing about, you know, a fairy tale. It's like, well, you know, there's some, in some people's mind, it's a very light story for children. In other people, it's this incredibly dark, uh, you know, almost horror stories. Things have, for me, have always had different meanings. Same with the word normal. It's like it's such a disturbing word, you know. They just throw, you're not normal, you are normal, and, and it, it's, it's such a... Uh, meanings of words uh, have uh, sometimes complete opposite meanings for me. He has got an absolute distinctive style, and there's certain... Um, that is so inimitably him, and practically every frame of his film is his signature. Um, and there's certain motifs, I mean, just off the top of my head, they're like, you know, stripes, you know. Um, mostly black and white, curlicues, Johnny Depp, you know. There's certain things that repeat itself, certain things that come through and repeat themselves, and also it's just his, his sense of humour and his perspective on, on life. There's something deeply poetic about Tim, and, and there's something deeply poetic about the images that he creates, that he conjures, and, and that he gives to us uh, as viewers. Burton grew up in California in the suburb of Burbank, just outside Los Angeles. It's a place which he describes as anywhere USA, and yet his childhood experiences there have directly inspired his creative vision. The sort of culture that I grew up in, in sort of this sort of suburban California, and I'm sure it happens all over the world, but it, it, it felt particularly strong to me. You know, you go to school and, you know, this person's good at sports, this person's good. You know, the, the sense of categorization happened very, very early on, and I was just always felt it sort of, it, it sort of undermined people's individuality and, and, and the different sides to people that you know, everyone has. You think the, the ordinariness of the place, the Anywhere USA of the place, forced you to... A absolutely. I think direction. you had to go internal and you had to go inside your own mind to kind of create that kind of excitement and, and fantasy that, that, that you kind of felt was lacking in the culture. What happened at school? I never thought of myself as a strange child. I mean, I liked monster movies and I played in the local cemetery, uh, but most of the kids did, you know? I mean, it wasn't like it felt, you know, like making little Super 8 movies. It never felt strange, but yet the culture very early on categorizes you, and then you feel kind of bad about it for a while, but then it kind of, you think, know, well, this is the way it is. So then you get a bit liberated by that. You know, once you're sort of looked upon as strange, then there's kind of a freedom about it. You're able to kind of act, uh, you know, a bit more eccentrically than, either, you know, the other kids because they've put you in that category. You did leave home when you were 12 and lived with your grandmother and then you set up in a flat of your own when you were about 15 or 16. 
My grandmother told me that I used to leave home even before I could walk. I don't know. I, so I'm not quite sure what that dynamic was. I would crawl out of the house or somebody would drive away. I, they, I'd ask if I could go with them. Early on, I just sort of placed it on the fact that I didn't really get along with my parents. But that's kind of an easy sort of, most people could say that. Even before I was conscious of it, I was just responding against that kind of society. I just wanted out of it. That's why I... You know, and somebody to this day tells me to do something, my immediate flick is to say, I'm going to do the opposite of that. And I just can't get that out of my, my mind. It's something that was there very, very early on. When you were very small, you, you seem to have started sketching, thinking in terms of putting your ideas into pictures. Put it yeah, I mean, because I really didn't speak very much, um, or so I was told <laughs> for other people. Um, which I, it was true, I wasn't a really great communicator, so I, uh, you know, I just communicated through drawing or sketches. Were you sketching stuff which turned up later in your, has turned up later in your career? Yes, I mean, I, you know, I have a fairly limited sort of sketching style, so, you know, characters always kind of look the same, things always look a bit, you know, uh, similar. <laughs> I remember searching a little bit later on in life uh, this image, which it felt very much me about the scissor hands character. That's why I always loved sort of old folk tales or fairy tales because they, they sort of indicated somebody's subconscious, and you're able to kind of get things out, you know, because the, the drawings aren't great; they're just something that it was an emotional release for me. And he's drawing all the time. He always has a pad, he always has a pen, he always has a stain in the top left-hand pocket um, of his shirt. Uh, it's just his way of... I have a feeling, I don't know, this might be fanciful, but that he has a way, a direct access to his unconscious. He lets things marinate and just let his unconscious do the work, and then ever so often it pops up. I love it because I'm with him, so I've got, like, the whole of our relationship and, you know, birth of our child and Billy, you know, he, he did a great sketch of me giving birth. I've got it, actually. <laughs> I'll show it to you. It's just, just his way of expressing himself. And, and often, ideas start there. 